In school, we learned that solving a problem is as easy as observing the issue, making a hypothesis, and then testing it. But county leaders say the formula for solving crime in Macon isn't that simple. It's not an exact science. Catherine Dennis is the president of the Community Foundation of Central Georgia. Right now, the organization plays a central role in Macon's violence prevention plan. You may know it as MVP. We had to do something that, that I mean, it was, I mean, that people killing each other, that's, that's not good. Using a three-year, $2.5 million grant from Bibb County, the foundation decided which local organizations would receive funding to try to create change. We want to hear from you on some issues you have, but more importantly, some solutions. That was Mayor Lester Miller almost two years ago at one of the first community forums aimed at reducing violence in the city. The forum called on Maconites to bring their ideas to leadership. Using those ideas and beliefs, a community-led strategy was designed. What we heard from the community was that mental health activities and programs for our youth and education and um, and teaching life skills and um, and job skills were the probably the most important. And so that was considered when we looked at the applications. One longtime organization made mental health the focus of its application. This whole mental health piece is is huge. It is. It's absolutely critical to what we're dealing with as it relates to violence and crime. With 60 applications and $825,000 on the line, the Community Foundation awarded 25 nonprofits and faith-based organizations. Dennis says the group that got the largest award is an organization that has a strong track record, Next Level Community Development Center. I have a very um, sincere and significant passion for those young people who feel like life can only look a certain way for them. For 23 years, Lakeisha Toomer has been the executive director of Next Level Community Development Center. It's an academic-based after-school and summer program that's focused on prevention. All type of prevention services, alcohol and drug abuse, gang violence, um, mental health, um, uh, sex education. The free program is for those who fall 150% below the poverty level, specifically those living in neighborhoods run by Macon's Housing Authority. According to census data, about 25% of people in Macon live in poverty. Next Level received $90,000 of MVP funding. The group used the money to start providing mental health counseling. One of the factors the Macon community said has a big impact on violent crime. It's a lot of anger in a lot of the kids nowadays. Audrey Andrews believes more people should be open to discussing their mental health. In the past, she's spoken to a counselor, and now her daughter Ava is seeing one because of Next Level. I really never like thought much about like counseling or anything until they had brought it up and my mom brought it up to me. Ava has been talking to a licensed counselor for weeks for free. She says it's already made a difference for her, and she thinks counseling could benefit everyone, especially other teens. They be going through a lot that a lot of people don't know about. The mental health component is meant to meet children and parents where they are, figuratively and sometimes literally. So counseling services can happen at the counselor's office or even in Tumor's office at the Development Center. Our responsibility is to make sure they get the service. And quite frankly, we're gonna do whatever we can to make sure they get the service. Though Next Level started mental health counseling with the MVP grant, Tumor says the program will be able to sustain long-term. According to Katherine Dennis, that's an important part of the award process, along with making sure organizations meet goals that they set for themselves. But in the same way crime didn't spike overnight, she says the success of MVP won't happen overnight either, and no one should expect it to. How are you turning the needle? How you spent $50,000, tell me in six months, you know, why haven't, why haven't the numbers changed? That's just, that is not going to happen when you're investing in children and youth. And I mean, this is a long-term investment, and I, I can't think of anything that's more important. Next week. Project Macon looks into an organization whose application didn't make the cut. 
the decades of work they say they've been doing to change lives in Macon. Reporting from the studio, Brittany Miller.